Hello everyone, and welcome to a brand new series on my channel that I'm going to be working on for a while. I'm calling it War Game Academy, and it's basically my own sort of tutorial series about general ideas uh, in the game, general things like units and unit statistics, and then strategies and tactics. So what we're going to start with today for the first episode of the series to kick it off is we're going to talk about uh, the unit statistics. Um, basically, you have to remember there's like over like 1400 units in this game so there's a lot of things that you need to look into when you're building your decks and when you're choosing your units about like certain unit values so just for like an example just kinda go through so I guess we can start with the infantry part so over here you'll see this is basically the unit statistics card so this will tell you everything you need to know about a particular unit that you have chosen now I believe in game you can actually look at the uh, unit statistics by pressing F I believe that's the hotkey for that um, so for like infantry here you'll see like actually in all of them like let's just go to all of these and we'll just like let's see Pick a nice comparison because let's get out of the command vehicles here. No, let's pick a bit better one. Okay, pick that. So basically, like on the top here, like this icon here is the basically like the country icon. So which country this is is this unit assigned to? So like the A10 Thunderbolt 2 is assigned to the US, and the Mesta S is assigned to the USSR. Um, right next to that, you will see the cost, and that's basically the cost of the unit in deployment points, which are the cost you uh, you will need to buy this unit. So you will need like this amount of points before you can buy this unit. Uh, and also indicates the reward of points when you kill said unit. Um, right next to that is the name of the unit, which should be pretty self-explanatory. And right next to that, uh, you have a little indicator telling what type of unit it is. Now I use um, NATO icons for units, actually like legitimate um, icons for military units that the North Atlantic Treaty Organization uses f to identify particular unit types. So like for the A-10 Thunderbolt that would be a ground attack craft and then like over here for the MISTA this unit, this uh, icon is for self-propelled artillery. Uh, now you, you don't have to have it this way. You can have it basically like the war game icons, and they actually provide like little tiny pictures. But I like it this way because it's a little bit more authentic. Below that column, we have like the weapons column, and you basically like see pictures of like the different weapons of of these units. Typically, most units will have a max, actually all units will have a max of three weapons listed. So like for the Mista it has its howitzer listed, its main gun listed, and its uh, medium machine gun. And when you hover over it, it will tell you what kind of a weapon it is and what kind of characteristics it has. Uh, like this, like you see it says howitzer and it has like a little description of it. Main gun it has a description of that and its characteristics. And medium machine gun and its characteristics. Below that you will okay, hold up no. Below that is the weapon name, which should be pretty self explanatory. Um below that, uh depending on the weapon type, it will tell you what kind of caliber and uh other characteristics of that unit's weapon. So like for the Gao A or eight A Avenger, it is basically a high explosive anti-tank weapon so it fires anti-armor chemical rounds and it also has an area effect so it makes little tiny explosions and of course it has the list of the caliber and ammunition 30 millimeter rounds um, 1100, 1170 rounds or like in this one it, the uh, Mista's 2A64 howitzer cannon has area of effect uh, can fire corrected shots all these are listed here. They can, they describe what they are. It has to be stationary to fire and can fire smoke rounds. So it basically lists all the capabilities of the weapon and its characteristics. 
Um, below each weapon, you will have different values that you need to look over. Uh, first is, like, first set of values are range. And this basically tells you the maximum range of the unit's weapon. So for the Mrs. Howitzer, it would its range is 29,050 meters. So it can fire as far as that um, range value. And it also has it listed for different uh, parts of the battlefield, for like ground. So this only has like a range on ground, so it has no range against helicopters and he airplanes. This on the other hand, the Thunderbolt 2 has a ground range of 2,800 meters with its uh, it's auto cannon, but it also can fire on helicopters and airplanes and it has uh, range values for those as well. Uh, depending on the unit, like for artillery pieces they don't have like accuracy values, but other uh, weapons do. So like, uh, the, Ma like the Maverick uh, AGM missile has an accuracy value of 40, so the accuracy basically um, determines the weapon's chance to hit a direct shot. Uh, below that is a stabilizer, uh, which basically is a value of the accuracy and the chance that a weapon will score a hit while it's on the move. If it has no value for stabilizer like this, it cannot fire on the move. It has to be completely stationary in order to fire. Um, next value is armor-piercing power, and that basically it measures the damage dealt to enemy armor. So this has a armor piercing power of 26 which is pretty high um, and it's also based on the armor value of the unit that the weapon's being used against. HE power basically is the value of the explosive power of the weapon and how it affects non-armored uh, units. So like cheap transports and infantry. Uh, the suppression um, value basically measures how much a particular weapon will deal uh, damage to a unit's morale, which we will talk about uh, later on in this series is unit morale and their combat effectiveness. Uh, below that is reload time, which is basically a delay in in seconds before like an, uh, another volley of that weapon can be fired. So it's the value of how long it takes before the weapon can be fired again. Um, below that, you have like a little tiny 3D model of the unit. Uh, and then right next to that, you have the armor values. Uh, so you have armor values for front, side, back, and top armor. Typically, front armor on anything is going to be the highest. Uh, side armor is below that. Back armor is below that. And top is, is below that. So basically it's like the general armor values of your unit. Uh, this is very important especially when you look at uh, tanks because tanks typically, well actually all tanks have more armor in the front than they do anywhere else. So that's very important when you're formulating like your strategies and your decks and when you're actually fighting battles and when you want to reverse your tanks instead of having them turn completely around. Um, also on the unit card, like directly below that are more, are more uh, measurements. First is the strength of the, uh, the unit, which is basically the number uh, of hit points of a unit. Now for infantry, that's basically like the strength is basically the amount of soldiers in the squad. But for like vehicles, like tanks or artillery pieces, the strength is basically like the hit points. And I don't know all the math behind all this. I'm just presenting like a basic like overview of what these values mean in the best way I could. So yeah, uh, the size of the unit is basically like how big is the unit. So like this ATGM Milan three uh, F three squad, basically its size is very small because it's basically like two soldiers, and means it has a smaller chance of being hit. While as the Mista its size is big, so it means it has a greater chance of being spotted and uh, targeted. Optics is basically the measurement of how well this particular unit can see other units on the battlefield. So 
Uh, the band tank forgot team has medium optics, which is n not terrible, but it's it's okay, which means it can see units in an okay manner on the battlefield. Whereas the Mista has bad optics, so it can't really see units on the battlefield, except for what excuse me, your recon can spot, which is actually very important when discussing reconnaissance units because you want to find units with decent I mean like it's up to you for what you pick but like for example uh let's let's find a um uh, like for example this BRDM1 has good optics so it can spot things pretty well but this BPZV um which is basically like a Czechoslovakian BMP2 has exceptional optics which means it has a greater chance of spotting units on the battlefield. So that's something you need to consider as well. Uh, the speed is basically like um, the value of which units can drive off-road. Um, and it's measured in kilometers per hour, not miles per hour. So this is very important when determining whether or not you want a vehicle that is slower or faster. If you want if you prefer speed or if you prefer some of the things like armor because typically more, the more armored a unit is the slower it is the road speed is basically like a unit speed when it's on the road and this is when you give the fast move command to units and this is typically the speed that they will travel at when they are on the road the stealth is basically the the uh, measurement of a unit's ability to be undetected which is uh which is which can help I don't know, I mean uh it allow you to help determine whether or not you want a more stealthier unit or a less stealthy unit. Typically the most stealthy units are uh special forces reconnaissance squads or just special forces in general because they are I don't know, they just they're typically just better at not being spotted. And this could be really good when you're trying to sneak around to the enemy base. So that's another thing to consider in unit statistics. Now, infantry don't have the next two values, but vehicles do. And that is basically like fuel, which is like the total fuel capacity of that unit, which is measured in liters. And it's basically how much fuel this unit will take before it needs to refuel. And then below that is uh, autonomy, and it's basically like how long, like, it can go without having to need to uh, refuel and typically like the bigger the the unit uh, is the longer it can drive before it runs out of fuel and so yeah so it's, it's basically like if it has poor like if it's I mean the colors of everything kinda also indicate like the value of something so if it's like blue that means it's really good if it's like red it's poor Green, it's like okay. Uh, well, green is actually better than medium. Medium's like okay, and so on and so forth. I think you get the general idea. So, like for example, like just measuring autonomy here, real quick. Uh, like the Leclerc, it may have like 1,700 liters of fuel, but it has 50 less autonomy than the KPZ T-72S for East Germany. Like it has less fuel, like a thousand liters, but it has greater autonomy. So that's a, something you want to consider when looking at like your vehicles and whether or not you'll be able to get these units to travel across the battlefield and not run out of fuel while they are en route. Uh, amphibious is basically, basically let you know if a unit can go on water obviously like this is limited to a very small amount of vehicles depending on what it is uh... helicopters don't have this value they yeah they don't they just don't have this value instead it's pro mostly limited to uh... infantry fighting vehicles or armored personnel carriers like the VAB they are typically amphibious and it will actually tell you what their speed is on water in, ca in this case the VAB T20 has a speed of 45 kilometers per hour so that's another thing you want to look at especially with like your transports um, right below that is the year and that's basically like 
according to this the year of production but in reality like a lot of it is just like the year the unit was introduced so that's the reason why like Eugen can get away with a lot of like some of these newer units like T72BU like the year that was introduced was 1993 or but according to this is year of production so this basically helps you determine like um, this is primarily for era decks so like a pre-1985 deck you cannot get this unit like if you didn't limit it to anything else you could not get the T72BU because it was made in 1993 but like in a pre-1985 deck you could get the T72M Jaguar because it was made before 1985 uh... below that is the type of unit so this basically determines what sort of like deck types this unit are available for um, in this case um, the T72BU is only available in an armored deck. Now this does not apply to like general purpose decks. General purpose decks you can get all units of a particular country, but if you want to specialize like get a mechanized deck or armored deck, you will be limited to what unit types you can call on. So this is limited to armor, so this can only be put in an armored deck if you specialize. Um, some units are prototypes and this will indicate if that is so which basically means a prototype can only be used in a armored not armored excuse me it can only be used in a national deck but coalitions allow you to get the prototypes of any country in those decks let's see if there's anything else I'm forgetting um, okay um, because ships are new to this game there's also let's see the speed of ships is measured in knots I think if I remember correctly so this is like 24 knots uh, they also have a value of sailing so this determines like what kind of sailing like how what kind of water levels the ship can float in so this is like deep sea so the Hatsuyuki is deep sea uh, ship so it only can go in like like ocean water it cannot go in rivers Whereas the, uh, let's see, let's find a, it's not a good comparison here. Where is it? Where are these ships? Give me a second while I find it, because there's a lot of things to look at here. Okay, here we go. It's like, Chamsuri is like a coaster, so it can basically like, uh, can sail close to the shores, but only river boats can sneak on the rivers. So that's basically what the sailing value uh, is measuring. And then the close uh, SeaWiz is basically close in weapon system and this basically measures how good a ship is at countering incoming enemy missiles. So like this depends on the different type of ship so actually we need to go back up. So like compared to like like the Chancery has good SeaWiz while the Fremantle has none so that means the Champsery is really good at, um, not really well I don't know but it's it can counter certain uh, incoming rounds whereas the Fremantle cannot and even if we go look at like the Hatsuyuki it basically has the same I'm trying to find one that's better oh okay here we go the Jianju has very good sea wisdom which means it, it's even better at countering incoming enemy anti-ship missiles than the Champsery and I think no, wait, hold up. Here we go. We have to cover planes still because they have some unique uh, unit statistics. I want to find a good one. Here we go. This is a good one. Let's see if there's anything we can compare. Okay. Yes, this is good enough. Um, they have the value measurement of ECM, which is basically electronic countermeasures. So this is basically measuring how well that these jets on their own can counter anti-aircraft uh, weapons. Uh, typically, the better the ECM, the the better survivability of a jet. So, like the EF11 or 111A Raven has 60% ECM, which is really good. Whereas this F10 4J Ryu has only 10 ECM, which means it has a greater chance of being hit than the Raven. The error detection uh, basically is measuring how well this jet is good at detecting other jets in the air. So both of these have 
a value of good, so they are good at detecting jets. Whereas the FA uh, F-15A Eagle is very good, so it can detect jets really well. And the F-15C Eagle is exceptional at detecting uh, enemy jets. It also has a turn radius value, which basically is a measure of how like tight or wide its turn is going to be. Basically, a lower value represents a sharper turn, while a higher value represents a wider turn. Typically, the lower the turn radius value, the better, which means it's it can, it's better at maneuvering in dogfights. Uh, time the target. This is probably the last uh, value to go over. It's basically like how long a jet can fly before it has to evac bingo, which basically means like it's running out of fuel to fly in the mission and has enough fuel to go home. So this is like 90 seconds, uh, while the Raven is 60 seconds. And I believe we have covered every single thing. Oh, hold up. Where's the supply vehicles? Where is it? Okay, here we go. Oh, no. Basically, like, uh, for supply vehicles, they have a value of supply, which basically says how many liters of supply capacity they can have. So, this has 800 liters, whereas, like, a Chinook has, like, 2,500 liters. And typically, that's better. So, it has greater fuel capacity and can s dish out more supply for units that need it. Okay, so I believe that is the end of this episode for unit statistics. In the next episode, I'm going to talk about units in the logistics category. So we're going to be talking about what those type of units are. And so, yeah, if you enjoy, leave a like, comment, subscription. Sorry if I was kind of having a hard time talking, but this is just kind of the first episode. So I'm going to get used to this and do probably a better job later on. So, yeah, I'll see you next one. Goodbye.